Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. When Intel first announced that they were going to be getting into the world of discrete GPUs, I think most people were quite excited at the prospect of a third player in the market. But it's hard to deny that there have been a lot of conflicting rumors regarding not only the performance targets of Alchemist, which is the first generation of Arc, but also when will we even see these things released? As according to the rumors anyway, they should have already been available on store shelves and well, they've not. I decided to reach out to numerous of my sources to find out what's been going on and hopefully this video can give you some sense of just that. Just before we get into it though, a quick word from this video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's begin with the release date because quite frankly, performance targets are great, but if you can't go to the store and pick it up, it just doesn't matter. And yes, Intel Arc, the first generation anyway, has certainly been delayed. And obviously, you can kind of see that Intel had not really planned for this with their marketing, and we've seen this in numerous ways, not least of which with things like XESS being demoed. Now, the good news is some aspects of the product are coming along quite well, and we'll get into that in just a moment. And honestly, long-term Intel's um, plans for GPUs, and we'll get more into this in a moment, are also looking to be pretty robust. However, the first generation of uh, products, Alchemist, is certainly seeing some problems. Now, to my understanding, we should have already seen these products launch and it should have been a flagship product with uh, TSMC's 6NM process. It should have been like a joint marketing exercise to put it in one way or another. In fact, according to my sources, the first source said, product meant to be the flagship for TSMC 6NM launch. Make of that as you will. Source number two, yeah, AMD wasn't supposed to launch uh, 6NM, TSMC, but uh, with Alchemist. Now, I will stress that with some of the quotes here, I've slightly changed some of the words or adjusted them just slightly with what I've been told. The reason behind that is really simple. I didn't want it to be easy to be able to kind of track using someone's speech patterns and stuff like that. So quite a lot of these quotes are really close to what I was told. However, I've substituted words or slightly adjusted the mannerisms in which people have spoken, again, just to try to protect people because, well, I don't want, obviously, it to be easy to figure out who's told me what. So just to give you a really quick timeline of events, I was told last year that we should have basically seen these products launch Q1. In fact, before that, I'd even heard that it was going to be kind of endish of last year, but no, that slipped, and then it was going to be Q1. Then more recently, I was told that no, Q1 is probably not going to happen, and instead it's going to be Q2. But now two to three sources have told me this is probably not actually going to be the case with Q2, but instead it could even be that Intel do not get these products on store shelves until Q3 or even Q4. So source number one has told me that it will not make Q2 for desktop. Source number two has told me Q3 slash four is what I'm hearing with laptops probably a bit earlier. Then source number three told me 80% is hardware, 20% is software issues, and this is the cause for the delay. So yes, um, I've now heard from at least a couple of people who are telling me that Q3, Q4 is probably when we're going to be seeing these products. And just to stress here, this is for desktop. Now there is a possibility that the laptop products could come a little bit earlier, but even they are facing some delays. So I guess the question, and it's a pretty obvious one to follow up that with, is why actually are we seeing these delays from Intel? What's actually going on? Now, of course, 
when we're talking about this stuff, we are dealing with leaks. So I'm sure what I'm about to tell you is certainly not the complete picture. And unless someone at Intel wants to officially go on record and reveal everything, and I don't think they're going to reveal all of the details because, quite honestly, they would probably be giving away a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that they just can't reveal in public. Um, but I do have some ideas. So it does seem to be predominantly software related. I've had multiple people now tell me that the software, and this is not just like, oh, it's the drivers, and the driver stack is quite a complicated thing because you have to remember it's not just like, oh, we need Windows. It needs to work on Linux. It has to work on across different versions. And game performance as well is a really big deal. So for example, if you have really inconsistent performance, let's say for the sake of discussion that in Call of Duty X, you get really good performance and it's competitive as like an, uh, a, a, you know, relatively priced NVIDIA product, but in Call of Duty Y, the performance is like half that or just crashes. That ain't going to cut it. Like you can't just tell someone, well, you know, just switch to the other Call of Duty and you'll be good. Um, and also, of course, you need other features to work as well, because to be competitive in this space, obviously, if we were to look at AMD, for example, they have been pushing, yeah, sure, stuff like FSR and overclocking, but outside of that even, things like Relive or being able to stream and capture to someone else. And so NVIDIA, GeForce Now, and all of these other features that are just part and parcel with modern day GPU releases. And all of this stuff has to work harmoniously together. So drivers are one thing, in fact, the entire suite, the entire package. I'm hearing XCSS is doing relatively well, and we'll get more into that in a moment, but even things like VGA BIOS are apparently a problem. Speaking to my sources, on the software side of things, Source 1 told me it's pretty bad. As of a month or so ago, it just keeps crashing in many games. Source 2, DirectX 11 performance is much worse than 12, possibly a reason they're delaying, as synthetics are apparently better. Source 3, XCSS has a lot of potential, but typically there are lots of software bugs. I believe they mean software bugs are not pertaining necessarily just to XCSS, but across the entire suite. As for the hardware side of things, because, well, there are hardware issues, uh, source number one told me that VF, that's voltage frequency curve, is a big problem. 100 megahertz has a tremendous impact on both power and heat. Source number two told me heat and power consumption issues, mostly. Um, and source number three said it's harder to put in laptops and is causing performance issues. Now, obviously, that basically is not a particularly great thing. I think some of this has to do with the fact that they are basically scaling up, essentially with a lot of modifications, a basically iGPU architecture. And this is probably one of the reasons that Battlemage I'm hearing much better things about, although we'll get into Battlemage more in just a moment. So now let's move on to the next question. And that is, well, what about the performance targets? Like how bad and how good actually are these architectures? So this is a bit of a story. So I decided again, just to give you guys a quick timeline of events. Some of my earliest reports with Alchemist in terms of the performance anyway, this is, you know, after we actually learned that Intel were releasing an architecture uh, for discrete GPUs. Um, and basically I'd been hearing that the performance targets were around RTX 3060 Ti, but there was a key difference and it was going to be cheap. Basically Intel's strategy here was pretty simple. Um, they basically wanted to put their foot in the door. They wanted to use this as a vehicle to not only gain trust and traction with gamers, but also for them to, well, basically get cut their teeth and develop something. And honestly, this strategy has worked really well for folks who are now working at Intel in the past. For example, Raja Kodori. It's very hard to deny that the RX 480, aka, if I can say the word, acronym, uh, Polaris, has been a tremendous success for AMD. Sure, now it had its reputation kind of tarnished with how uh, popular it was with miners. But, I mean, let's just be honest, guys. Like, if you owned an RX 480 or a derivative thereof, you were pretty happy. In fact, you probably still are because for the price you paid for that thing, depending whether it was four or an eight gigabyte variant, you basically got a card that is quite, it's quite ridiculously fast. I mean, it's, you know, in a lot of benchmarks, to be honest, it's still outperforming the RX 6500 XT, which is 
obviously quite a testament. So for Intel to take that same approach, it made an awful lot of sense. But then later on, I started to hear that this was no longer the performance target. Basically, those were kind of like some of the preliminary testing inside of Intel, what they were kind of initially aiming for, but they were hoping instead to be able to clock this thing much higher, and therefore they were probably going to be aiming for RTX 3070 to 3070 Ti, although honestly I think that the 3070 Ti was probably an outlier. I was mostly hearing around 3070 levels of performance, but as always with these rumors, it's kind of difficult to know exactly. I will say though that the mobile side of things was less, and I'm not saying that it was like, you know, awful as in it was going to be really bad, but you know, it's going to be down a little bit, which obviously makes sense. Like the RTX 3080, for example, in mobile versus desktop, there is obviously quite a performance difference there. Then we started to see these leaked benchmarks for synthetic results for the 512 execution unit system. And this, and this GPU did perform roughly in line with those leaks, which is a great thing, but then not an Apple fan posted on Twitter and stated that what he was hearing wasn't necessarily good in terms of the performance metrics. Basically, the GPU was just not performing anywhere close to what it should be, and instead was closer to something like an RX 5700 XT. And obviously, a 5700 XT is not an RX 3070 or a 3070 Ti. So I've now reached out to multiple other sources, and I've basically heard from those sources, source one, I believe it was a 3070 target, but the current performance is below that. In games, I want to stress that term because we'll get into it more in a second, it's doing great in synthetic benches, said source two, but it's inconsistent in games, particularly things like DirectX 11. I'm hearing also from another source that was OpenGL as well. Source number three, laptop parts are currently nowhere near the initial performance targets. I've actually been hearing from yet another person, although I don't have quotes because they were kind of like just giving me words here or there, but they basically told me that laptop manufacturers have been a little frustrated because apparently like the heat of these things is not doing so well. And that's one of the reasons that we're seeing so much in terms of optimization. Okay, so let's kind of do a wrap up here. Is Alchemist in trouble? Is Intel's Alchemist going to be a disaster? Well, there is some actually positive news on that front, and there's also some negative. So let's just kind of go with a brief synopsis. So Intel essentially knows they've only really got one chance to make a really good first impression, and therefore they want to delay it as long as it's necessary to make that first impression, which is actually a good sign. It's a good sign that Intel know that, you know, to, they have to get all the, the boxes ticked. Secondly, Battle Mage is, quote, much improved, end quote, in performance. I'm hearing that it's still going to be pretty hot, as I've mentioned previously, but it's not like RDNA 3 and Lovelace are exactly super duper cool running. I also want to mention that Intel are devoting a ton of cash to their GPU plans. And this is not just for marketing but also, you know, things like the actual engineering efforts behind that. And you have to remember that Intel are kind of building this from scratch. Sure, they have had iGPUs, but it, it's a monumental task to actually do this. Like, there's a reason that, you know, you don't just see, like, multiple companies pop up every day and develop, like, high-performance x86 CPUs or high performance GPUs. It's 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 a lot of cash. It's a lot of it's a lot of heartache. It's a lot of work um, to do this. And this is not like to say that Alchemist is going to be a perfect product because ultimately, like I've said to you multiple times, no matter what the product is, the rumors are fun and it's awesome to cover the leaks and all of that stuff. And it's really fun, you know, to kind of discuss this stuff. But ultimately, it's like when we get the product and when we can actually test it and look at the frame rates and figure out how the performance goes and what the you know what the cost is versus the um versus the performance and we can start to do some meaningful comparisons that ultimately is what matters with this said source one told me that battle mage is likely to be good probably a bit behind amd slash nvidia next generation performance but it's a bit too early right now to be sure because of obvious reasons but it's still competitive 
Source number two has told me that Intel has a ludicrous amount of MDF, marketing development funds, set aside for this. And source three told me, Intel want to push NVIDIA out of the laptop market with I plus I configurations. Pretty much everyone I've spoken to has agreed that ultimately it doesn't need, that is Intel, to release a product which is RTX 3070 Ti initially. And I've mentioned this multiple times myself, quite honestly, I am happy for an RTX 3060 Ti competitor and for them to get things like XCSS right, because ultimately they can release an architecture which is con considerably faster, excuse me, in the future. But I think for now, what we actually need is a viable competitor for people who actually, they don't have like a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks for a GPU. And I'm really hoping that Intel can do this, that they can put out a really good competitor. And this is not to say that I don't think, you know, NVIDIA and uh, AMD are not going to have awesome products as well. The next generation of RDNA, you know, Lovelace, they are sounding really good. And I'm actually going to be discussing more about both of those. In fact, today was supposed to have been a Lovelace video, but because I got so much information from a few sources regarding the release date and stuff like that of uh, Alchemist, I decided instead to kind of do a switcheroo -y. That's not really a word, but whatever. Um, and yeah, I am hearing that Intel will try to make these GPUs as cheap as possible. With that said, it's of course going to depend because the market at the moment is so damn volatile. <sighs> um, yeah, guys, I, I suspect that long term Intel will be in a good position. Like ultimately, Intel have so much cash at their disposal, but it is a case of they need to build the team. They need to build a lot of experience, essentially. And one of the things that AMD have really a strength in, at least in my opinion, is kind of, well, first of all, AMD are not new to building GPUs. I mean, obviously they technically acquired ATI, but that's beside the point. Um, but AMD have been really good at making products with essentially shoestring budgets. Let's just be honest. Like the budget for say the creation of Zen it probably wasn't as much money as Intel spend on coffee for the company. I'm, of course, being a bit silly, but you get my point. Like, AMD have just been really good at that. And they have a core team which has, quite frankly, just produced miracles. With Intel, they are essentially building that team and really, you know... They're on a massive engineering drive at the moment, like recruiting people. And I'm hearing that they are being... Let's, I wouldn't use the word poaching in a negative way, but they are like, let's say recruiting industry talent as quickly as they possibly can. Ultimately, GPUs and, you know, CPUs and all that jazz, it's really complicated. I will be mighty curious to see how all of this pl plays out. I'm personally hoping that I'm wrong on the release date of uh, Alchemist, and it's not going to be Q3, Q4. However, um... I find it telling that, let's say, two to three people who have absolutely nothing to do with one another. They they could not be further removed from how they would get the information. I, obviously, I can't say how, but I find it very interesting that all of them, when I reached out, told me, yeah, recently I'm hearing it's going to be Q3, Q4, and also multiple people gave me the exact well, not the exact answer, but variations of the same answer when it came to the problems of Alchemist. So, again, make of that as you will. I do, if an Intel employee is listening to this, please understand, I want you to be releasing an awesome product um, because, quite frankly, I think it's going to be cool. Like, I will support Alchemist when it comes out, assuming it's a good product. But let's just see how it goes. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves, and if you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video and subscribe for more content. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.